In this city, the sun rises praised. At the third hour, the descent of the Holy Spirit is celebrated. At the sixth hour, the crucifixion. And at the ninth hour, the death of the Christ is commemorated. And of course, every Sunday, with its distinctive pump, the priestly rite is performed. These are ordinary rituals. Those imperfect Christians who do not attend them reserve their religious duties for more glorious liturgical days. It would certainly be a shame even for non-religious Christians not to attend services on the day the Gospel was revealed to Mary or on the birthday of Jesus. It will be totally all right if you do not attend the Epiphany Feast though. However, if you want to be recognized as a good Christian, you would better attend one of those daily rituals during the last week of the 40-day fast before Easter. Still, all religious Christians are a little angry that they haven't been able to root out pagans, or rather, infidels like me. Yes, this is a religious city, but commerce hardly seems to care about Jesus. Any merchant who comes to the city from somewhere of the world brings his own god. Money provokes fun, entertainment sin. While the monks in monasteries debate whether the crucified body of Jesus has decomposed over time, the nobles simply sip their cypriot red wine and taste the breasts of their young mistresses. An old monk, or someone in monk's disguise, usually at the early hours of the evening, calling out to the crowd he gathers around him, cursing the increasing temptation and fun loving in the city, collects the money thrown into the box next to him, and goes home. Stinks. Everybody is a good Christian here by day and a friend of devil by night. No matter how much the priests of churches curse the theater and entertainment, the head of Dionysus, the god of wine, still adorns the doors of taverns. In this city, the sovereigns of knights are high-class prostitutes, and of the daytime, the baths, in which unlimited tolerance is displayed. In the secluded spots of the Zeusipos thermal, people playing love games with prostitutes of both sex can be seen praying in Hagia Sophia two hours later. Certain travelers Obviously, they wish to receive other services besides washing, often turn their eyes to naked bodies by a pool. The pools are surrounded by boxes where the traders who get caught in the net of one of those dozens of male and female prostitutes will withdraw after the so-called um, a business toll. <laughs> this sweet, sinful, seductive city of ours presents her nightlife to the sailors of the ships moored in her harbors with their pockets full of money to the long blonde haired gods to the banging Egyptian crew who never think of boarding their ship that would leave for Alexandria the next day without getting the kiss of Byzantium everyone is Christian here but whenever there's a Dionysus festival somewhere, or I don't know, a pagan ritual maybe, people want to join it somehow. Especially those literates, the educated team that can read the ancient Greek classics, that is. Who the God knows if it's because of the nostalgic feelings or because of the attractiveness of the freedom to commit immoral deeds offered by paganism. They look as though they are trying to give a new life to old 
pagan gods. Actors and actresses do not really care the old religious women who spit and shout in their faces on the street saying that they will burn in the eternal flames of hell and simply continue to make the audience laugh by imitating priests and nuns in theatres. In the city, the smells of hospice, manure and barbecued meat mingle. The merchants of Sky come to the city centre in the morning with their barges, singing, and return their homes at sunset in the evening. In the slums and narrow streets, toothless women hurl unspeakable curses at each other. On the promenades of the banks of the Lycus River, there's the joy of mob. How genuinely they laugh. I'm hungry, but I don't want to eat. I just want to, I just want to laugh, just as that inferior mob does. How genuinely they laugh.